Hi friends, host Eric here, host Talking with Festival. Behind the recording software here is this guy, Eckler Toll. And who's interviewing him and talking to him? Somebody else I really am not fond of at all, Russell Brand. Now, I, I like his work, his professional work, his acting in certain movies has been good, but his politics are terrible. So anyway, uh, this nonsense is it is revelatory of why we need an actual model instead of just a bunch of nonsensey NI metaphors. Let's, let's go over some of what this guy says, Edgar Toll, in this video. Ego seeks superiority. Basically, he defines ego as requiring others to be inferior. I mean, <laughs> a normatively neutral way of saying it would be still metaphorical, but ego seeks distinction and uh, prefers positive distinctions, but that doesn't necessarily mean, mean you're making other people inferior. It just means that you fill in a, a niche of some sort, right? Um, that it's naturally the case that people are, are more talented at some things, less talented at other things, and that to the extent that they operate ontologically within a space that's comfortable for them, they're going to be more successful than a space that's less comfortable for them. From Acker Toll's perspective, how comfortable they are in their ontological space is mostly a matter of metacognition. That if one approaches these questions in the right way, that one will attain some kind of Zen enlightenment shit. Well, okay. So what he calls identification is also what you might call attachment, or just generally uh, associating a given thing, given meaning object with your own identity. He has this room analogy where he says, if you ask somebody to explain who they are, say, imagine yourself as a room. Now, describe all the things in the room. And the self will say, okay, well, I'm a, I'm a father, and I'm a boyfriend, and I'm a YouTuber, and list various qualities about yourself. And Edgar Toll says, and then they, you know, they're done. I say, okay, are you done? Yeah. Have you missed anything? What, oh, wise Eckert? The womb itself, the space. Isn't that most of what comprises the room? That's your consciousness. The analogy's terrible. It's a terrible analogy. The thing about space, I got a room is that it's the alternative to a distinct object in space. It's the absence of something. <clears throat> if, in fact, it were the case that that analogy were sound at all, then it would be the case that moving one piece of furniture in a room caused the other pieces of furniture in the room to move because impacting the space was observable. You can't impact space like that because it's not it's the it's not a thing called space. It's the absence of anything. So let's so um he says thought is about form. He he does he's correct in you know, he's fumbled around in the darkness and found some correct ideas, but has decided to present them in their least meaningful form and in an entirely wrong frame. <laughs> so there are, in fact, he says there are two dimensions. The dimension of object dimension, object consciousness, and space consciousness. What he means is there are 
metaphysical understandings of the world that are based on low resolution symbols with it that are binary and distinct usually by definition those are called words symbols whatever sentences um it's also the case that it that uh the objects of the self include physical objects too so um it makes sense to call that dimension object consciousness what i would call the metaphysical plane or uh, conditional reasoning a, a, a the aspects of the fields of self where understanding is uh, compri comprises meanings rather than experiences. The other dimension he calls space consciousness. Now, it's odd because, uh, of course, the other kind of consciousness is, is in fact the consciousness of the physical world, so it kind of makes sense to call it space consciousness, but most importantly, it's the uh, awareness of experience, which the, the core quality of which is duration, time passage, not space. You can experience things without moving in space at all. Now, what he, Eckhart Tolle's central thesis here is, is that it's a failure to adequately cultivate space consciousness that produces a ontological non-optimality called the illusion of arrival. <laughs> so, we've probably all felt this uh, before, this illusion of arrival, where, like, you're really stoked about something, and you think, ah, uh, now that shit's really going nice. But that's not permanent, you know? <laughs> there are ups and downs in life. To Eckhart Tolle's mind, this proves that um, we're not ontologically optimized yet. Of course, that's totally wrong. So, what I want to really draw your attention to here is just how much Eckhart Tolle is, has basically converted his own cognitive function bias into a universal advocacy to the detriment of everybody and the confusion of all by taking truths that are reducible in legitimate ways and trying to present them as irreducible so that they mean less than they should. But that's what happens when you don't have the right initial frame of reference. Cognitive functions provides us the right initial frame of reference because we can go, all right, so basically what happens here is we have an INFJ whose own experience has suggested to him that he's... He's less optimal when he's more metaphysical because he's already too metaphysical. And he's projecting not that onto everybody in the world. And he's cultivated this affect of experiential presence. And uh, and let's say it's totally real. Let's just say it's not, it's not even an affect that he's faking. It's totally real. Let's just pretend it is. Okay. I mean, even if it is, what is it supposed to represent? Some black belt of spirituality? Uh, but let's presume it is real. Um, it's still a bad piece of advice for anybody who's not an INFJ, maybe an ENFJ. He's failed to differentiate between himself and what works for him and what actually comprises some sort of good advice as a universal. Instead of doing proper meta-analysis, he is a meta-analyst and he's mostly trying to do meta-analysis, but instead of properly doing it, in other words, informing people, these are the mechanisms of, of th this is what, these are the mechanisms of discourse I'm using. These are the outcomes these mechanisms of discourse I'm using are going to attain. So, um... If, in fact, you are somebody who is too, who has too much identification, as he says, or attachment with meaning-based stuff and can miss the fluid reality in front of you because you're so stuck on the static meanings and how they line up, 
Then you, you just might be an INFJ or an ENTP. We do that too. Two most metaphysical types. If you if you're 150 miles down a hiking path and when you realize you've gone down the wrong path you're kind of screwed now Eckhart Tolle has done this he's I don't know if you've realized it I don't think I don't think he has realized anything he doesn't know He'd have, he has to do a lot of thinking still. He's not a stupid person. He's just... He's trying to... It's like... It's like watching a man with a rake really inefficiently dig dirt out of a ditch. Yeah, you're digging the ditch in the right place. Vaguely, approximately. Um... And you're making some kind of insightful distinctions. But you've no means to differentiate between you projecting your own experience and what might actually be universalizable because you don't understand the self as a stack of con attentional con manners or configuration of attentional manners. You understand it as an archetype, a metaphor, an in-eye hole that can't be reduced um, you understand life itself as a need for presence in the moment pretty good advice for our NFJs who are the rarest type in the world and pretty juicy bait for anybody with NI in the fourth slot which is all your SE doms a world full of SE doms out there to buy this bullshit well fortunately though uh Though it's hard for, for me to ever get heard by anybody, it seems like. I still persist in this world, and people like me persist in this world, to correct people like Eckhart Tolle. To correct people like Russell Brand, who's sitting there taking this whole stuff very seriously, like, this is Guru Joe here. No, he's not Guru Joe. He's a wrong man imposing his wrongness on an unsuspecting and largely gullible population. If he were correct... He would move away from dissembling terms and uh, muddying approaches, such as metaphor, and towards clarity. He's not doing that. I hate the idea of, of people being out there and going like, oh, you know, like, my life's a challenge. But I see Eckhart Tolle and I know um, if I do everything right, I too can uh, activate this, unlock this power or something. I feel bad because, of course, we have only so much time and energy and stuff to direct towards self-growth and self-optimization and, you know, a lot of stuff we have to do is our attention is directed towards something external to us. So, Almost everybody who would give advice about self-growth or self-help stuff or whatever you want to call it is going to make the mistake of doing analysis. As Edgar Tolle is largely doing, even though he's a meta-analyst. Which is to say, they're going to say, okay, well, I'm going to give some advice about self-help thing, right? Or self-growth, or I'm going to indicate a path for people or something. The only useful path, really, is to indicate to people here's how I'm projecting my bias onto you and here's why. Here's how your bias is manifesting and responding to stimuli A, B, C, D, E and here's why. Um, and if you happen to be my own type I'd be happy to give you advice. I feel qualified to give ENTPs advice. I don't really feel qualified to give other people advice because I understand how much what they need is contingent upon their type. I would, like, I know I know what advice types need. INFPs and INTPs both ask the same piece of advice all the time. How can I be more productive? How can I get stuff done? How can I overcome 
my nature. If you're somebody who's like a doer out there, ESTP guy, giving life coach advice, you, know, you just got to go do shit. Dude. You just got to bro. You just got to get down there and do it. Is that good advice to an INTP or an INFP? No. Uh, the best advice for them is foremost, remember that this sense of failure you're experiencing for, for not doing more is ontological assault imposed upon you by a society that doesn't recognize that everybody has a polar and some of them are um, make life harder than others and some of them are more visible than others and we have a tendency to pathologize people for their polars even though we do so usually most people do so in the, from a state of ignorance regarding their own polar so why they would pathologize somebody else's well because they don't understand it as they don't understand people as configurals, configurations of attention. If they did, then they would say, oh, I see, I get it. Um, the reason he's so, like, low scoring in this area is because it's naturally inferred by being high scoring in this area and having a finite amount of attention to spend. Um, if, I, uh, if I spend most of my attention on novelty, ideational generation, uh, dealing with responding to like watching a little bit of a video outside of me like that actor told video and then responding to it is a very any thing to do I only watched like three or four minutes of it at most <laughs> I made this much notes I said that's plenty to go over you know um, that's very much in my wheelhouse so if you spend most of your time doing that kind of stuff then you aren't spending your time organizing, arranging, presenting your existing resources. I have a massive pile of resources on my YouTube channel and the, I would say that the resources are attaining uh, a fraction of their, of, of the value that they could be attaining simply because I don't spend any energy or time organizing, optimizing, or otherwise streamlining my existing resources. I just get new, ah, there's a new resource I just made, throw it on the pile. Of course, you have to balance that stuff. Um, it's great to have a burst of productivity and make a bunch of resources, but if then instead of putting all those resources away in storage and getting used to how they're gonna be incorporated into your life, you just let them sit out in the rain while you make new resources, then um, you know that's not a very efficient way to be. And you're gonna feel a lot of times like you're. Ah, that was a waste. I wish I hadn't. I wish I hadn't been dumb like that. You're gonna think that kind of stuff a lot, you know. So. The the other thing I want to say before I end this video, about this style of wrongness, Edgar Toll, uh, Russell Brand style of wrongness, where you've got people who. Who are. For whom the existence of NI truths uh, is like a will o wisp. It causes them to simply gesture meaninglessly at them, and they seem to enjoy that process of being near magic without actually doing any discursive work. So, uh, the important thing to remember is that everybody's affect, mood, state of being, etc. changes over time. I feel like I'm pretty well optimized version of myself or fairly well optimized version of an ENTP and I there is no Zen Buddhist I'm here I'm present I'm compassionate I'm ready to da 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 that I always carry around with me to just sort of project this wisdom perceptual wisdom that hopefully will replace actual um, scrutiny withstanding. So Eckhart Tolle is not interested at all at withstanding scrutiny. He's interested at gesturing at wispy truths. Um, and you can see how if you're too metaphysical, you'll make a mistake as he has, and thinking that fundamentally 
the self is first and foremost what he calls object consciousness. In other words, that humanity is inherently like INFJs and ETPs, net default metaphysical and defined and controlled by an excess attachment to static meanings, um, which are miash at representing dynamic realities. Um, of course, for SE DOMs, especially, you know, for SFPs, for example, it's the opposite. The problem is they're too enamored with the, the fluid in the particular and therefore inadequately utilize the tools of the conditional and the con conditional and objective um, where they ought to be used. By default, they don't. Perhaps they can learn to. I try to learn to use some of my non-native manners of attention, at least to pay attention to the values that correlate with those, and remember to incorporate those when dealing with things, because that's what it means to to learn things and to be impacted by your new knowledge. <coughs> There was a time not super long time ago, 10, 12 years ago or whatever, five years ago maybe even, I don't know, where if, when I started going out with Rachel, my response to all of her astrology terror stuff would have been, she's like, that's just all bullshit, why are you into that stuff? It's, I always said something nasty like that or whatever. But cognitive functions have taught me to, they, they provided me a way to understand other people's uh, preferred preferred frames of reference. So I understand why Rachel uses astrology and or tarot to understand things about her relationship with me, even though the data about the relationship with me is right there in front of her and she could talk to me, she could just reference things that actually happened between us. It's much more comfortable for her to understand this relationship as expressive of an archetype of some sort than to understand the archetype and to see how our particular expression um, manifests variations on those archetypes. Uh, it gives her a sense of understanding. Now I understand why meow was meow, Eric, now that you said that thing about the ESFJs. It's something I hear from her fairly, fairly often. So understanding why somebody is taking what might seem a contraindicative approach is one of the advantages of learning our cognitive functions. My dad, I try to, if I didn't know about cognitive functions, I'd be much more frustrated with him. He's de he demonstrates his, his blind spot of introverted intuition quite frequently by wanting to fix things that aren't broken and by refusing to accept that a given vector is determinant in a thing. He wants to cross every T, dot every I, regardless of whether it's necessary or even helpful. Um, but the thing is, instead of trying to beat him over the head with NI, but, but dad, here's the truth. I understand now that that's not going to work. And there's a reason why it's not going to work. And so I, I, I respect my dad enough to engage with him in a way that only holds him accountable for being him, not for being me. Uh, you know, he's established plenty of things that are consistent in his way of being. And he's established his own criteria for what he thinks he should expect of himself. When he breaks those criteria, then he usually apologizes or I will go after him. I'll yell at him if he breaks his own criteria or something or something that is consistent with him. But his failure to understand NI or be responsive to my truths and have those things trickle down and affect his behavior, that's implicit to who he is. He can't do it. It's, I mean, a little bit, but he's just... Uh, if you're, whatever your polar is, 
it's something that's going to seem like a stark deficit to somebody for whom it's not the poor and about which you're just not even going to have any really concept that you're missing anything at all. Like, I don't feel like I'm missing anything with that pie, really. I don't... I mean, sure, I don't know who I am or if I have any worth at all, but, you know, who needs to know those things? Those things aren't relevant to any decisions, usually. They're just personal life decisions. Okay, so that's it. Ecker told you wrong. Russell Brand, you pissed me off. Will you guys stop, please? Both of those people. Okay, so here's, here's your homework, Ecker... Ecker Toll and Russell Brand. Both of your homework is to spend a lot of time watching my media, listening to me, and learning some things. Because I'm tired of you getting 600,000 views. 600,000 views, okay? 600,000 people listen to some, much, maybe even all, of that rancid trash. It filled my nostrils with a stench of rot. And it made my heart sink into my belly to know that that kind of pointless dissembling wrongness is being perpetrated on a global population by well-intentioned fools. They, they, they think they're doing something good in the world and they have no idea at all just how completely This is the risk of taking a lot of action before you've got it figured out. You end up with, you end up being a C.S. Joseph who's deep in the typology now and married unavoidably to his claim that he's an EHP. Even though it's completely it's unsustainable. He's married as a consequence also to his claim that I'm an ESTP because I'm obviously different from him and if I'm an ENTP, He's obviously not one. So, uh, it's like when you when you go too far ahead before you're ready, you can get yourself padlocked to a big box of wrongness and have no choice but to drag it down the street. Hacker Toll, he's built a career on this wrongness. So even if you were to learn now, he would have, he'd have a hard road to do to make up for the damage that he's done. Russell Brand. He has taken full advantage of his celebrity to have a bully pulpit, to be, to be able to project his ideation onto lots of different people so that they can hear it and maybe be convinced by it. And of course, you know, you can't blame him. He doesn't know that he's doing harm. He thinks he's doing good because he doesn't understand that his poor is a thing that's necessary if you're going to engage in helpful public discourse about public policy. Uh, if, you, if you're FI tool, your discourse about public policy will always do harm because you will necessarily not be evaluating it by the only metric that legitimizes it, TI, because it's your polar. Just like, for me, I'm terrible at relationships, picking relationship partners. Until Rachel, I, nobody was really respectful to me at all that I've been with. They all just sort of disrespected me and didn't like me and mistreated me. My ESFJ second wife, I wouldn't say she didn't like me or mistreated me, but I would say that she didn't respect me and I just sort of put up with it because I'm FI poor because I'm a moron in that area. So, I don't, I certainly wouldn't uh, make a, a video about how to know what's important to you. And give a bunch of advice about how to know what your feelings are telling you. I wouldn't make that video because no matter how carefully and thought I tried to make it, I would be terribly wrong. I don't know anything about that. I am blind in the function that one needs to successfully make meaning about that. So, it, you know, it's like me making videos about how to know what your feelings are telling you. It's like a tone-deaf person uh, singing the national anthem a cappella. An absolute shit show. Well, that's what Russell Brand is doing. He said, Look, I, I love performing. 
So I'm going to be a acapella singer. Even if you love performing, shouldn't you not perform in a way that you are tone deaf? I mean, you can't sing. You can't. You, you're unable to match pitch, and everything you attempt to sing sounds like torturous cacophony. Um, so, why would you choose to? I, I get that you want to perform a lot. Why would you choose to perform in a medium in which you're guaranteed to always suck? Well, that's what Russell Brand has done by choosing to make all this media about politics and ideational stuff that requires TI, public public policy discourse. He's a tone-deaf man who's chosen to sing a cappella. And there are enough other tone-deaf people out there in the world that he had somehow bamboozled 600,000 people to watch that soul-crushingly wrong Bowl full of tripe. So shame on you, Russell Brand, and Edgar Toll, but I know you don't mean it. It's not really shame on you. I can't really blame you because you don't you're not intentionally wicked. You 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 honestly believe that you're not doing harm, that you're probably doing benefit. You're you're wrong about that, but I can't I can't blame you for um for inadequacies of your positive moral indications. Uh because they're only indirectly negative moral violations. And even then, you know, I, I, I can't blame the blind guy who hits me with his stick. With his red tip stick. Oh, there's the stairs over here. That's me, Tardy. Don't talk about politics, Russell Brand. You can't think properly for that. You can talk about relationship stuff all you want. Talk about how people know their feelings and stuff like that. That you have information on that's wise and I'm sure very worthwhile. Public policy, any words coming out of your mouth are are just trash that makes it more difficult for people actually using the marketplace of ideas to effectively use it. So please stop. You don't deserve anybody watching your videos. I mean, maybe if you weren't talking about politics, I don't think you're especially funny, but you're you're not bad. And I like your movie work fine. But, um, yeah, it's like, just like I'm not gonna, gonna pay to see, um, uh, what's his name? Just like I'm not gonna pay to see, uh, Roger Federer um, play Scrabble, there's no reason to ever pay any attention to Russell Brand talking about politics.